I love collagens, and I think you should too, because they are really the key to understanding and treating chronic diseases. So what is a collagen? To start with, I would like to introduce you a little bit to the importance and the biology of collagens. So what do you think of when I mention collagens? I think many of you may be thinking about skin products. We want beautiful skin. We want beautiful collagens. But collagens are so much more than that. They are, in fact, the central building block of all biological structures. Just like the Eiffel Tower, where the beams and the pillars are completely essential for the structure of the Eiffel Tower. In fact, collagens are the main building block of the body. And type 1 collagen is the main protein in the body. And these proteins are the small building blocks that the entire body is made of. In addition, you might know that we are made of more than 30 trillion cells. And many organs actually have more of the matter outside the cells as compared to the cells. This outside the cells, this context is referred to as extracellular matrix. And this matrix is critically important for the function and the behavior of those cells. In fact, collagens are the central component of this matrix. And the cells, they know how to behave because of this matrix. In fact, if we look at cells, all cells have the same DNA. They have the same capacity to turn into a bone cell, a brain cell, a skin cell, or a muscle cell. And the reason why they know how to behave and what to do is because of the context, because of the matrix that they are in. So these cells only know how to function and when to live or when to die because of the context they're in. In fact, there are 28 different types of fantastic collagens, and they are all different in different organs, in different parts of those organs, and, and I'm going to take you through a, a few of those. So let's take bone as an example. Type 1 collagen is the main component of bone, and if we have a lesser quality of collagens, or if we lose our collagens in bone, the bones break. So at least we need to take care of our collagens. So I started my, my research in bone more than 20 years ago. And this is actually my second publication. More than 500 have, have come since then. But I didn't think I realized the importance of this when I, I first saw this publication. In fact, on, on this slide, you see, you see completely the same type of cells. To the left, the cells are on plastic. You can see the black spots, and they are flat. However, when those exact same cells with the same DNA are put in a collagen gel, they start looking like completely different cells. These cells look like the bone cells you saw on a previous slide, and, and they start to behave different. So very clearly, the collagens control the form, the function, uh, and what these cells are doing. So the collagens control cells. And this is the first premise of what I'm going to say today, that the matrix, what is around the collagens, they control cells. The second part is we regenerate. Think of your body as a construction site. There is demolition and repair ongoing all the time. In fact, um, we regenerate so much that the liver can regenerate if, uh, from just 25% of uh, remaining liver. Also, the, the bones regenerate. Every 10 to 25 years, we actually get new bones. And moreover, uh, the intestines actually regenerate every week. So this construction site, where we have demolition and repair ongoing every day, I mean, we need that to be in a perfect balance. If we just have a little bit more demolition in some organs, we lose that organ function. And if we have too much repair, then we have a different disease. And this balance 
And this demolition and repair, if that is out of balance, is actually what causing uh, chronic diseases. In fact, this demolition and repair is so important and ongoing all the time that you are not the same self you are today as you were 9 a.m. this Monday morning. So when this balance is out of control, this leads to chronic diseases. Chronic diseases are diseases that last a lifetime and that need to be managed. In fact, um, uh, if by the age of uh, over 65, then more than 80% of us will have at least one chronic disease. And what is the common denominator of these different uh, uh, diseases? It is that collagens have changed. There are different amounts of collagens in cancer, diabetes, autoimmune diseases with destruction of the, of the bones and in liver diseases. We see in these different uh, diseases that the collagens have changed. And moreover, we see that the collagens are continuing to change for the worse. And this means that the tissue composition and the collagens of balance is altered, the repair balance is, uh, is disturbed. And this is the central concept, that we are constantly regenerating. And that regeneration leads to that collagens are broken down and they are built up. And so in this beautiful slide, you see cells on the top and you see the structures of collagen below. And so when these tissues are being remodeled, then small collagen fragments are being released from the tissue into the bloodstream where we can use these as biomarkers. Biomarkers are just a simple measurement, just as weight or blood pressure, but it is a objective measurement of a biological process, and we researchers use them as biomarkers, and we use them every day. So interestingly, if, if so many of us have or are going to have a chronic disease, how come we are so bad at, at treating them and even curing them? Well, I think it's because we are, we are looking at the tip of the iceberg, not what lies beneath. The cells are only a small part of what's going on. Actually, there's more matrix than cells. So it is essential to understand chronic diseases that we're not just looking at the cells, but we look at the context, the matrix, and the collagens. And this is the second premise, that we regenerate, and this generate collagen fragments that tells us about the processes that may lead to chronic diseases. So, let me give you three biological examples of what the collagen balance means for patients uh, and how important this collagen balance is for patients. And before we go there, I want to take a deep dive into how a collagen truly looks because they are unique and fantastic molecules with a structure, uh, as you can see, that is unique for collagens and they have this structure so they are they are strong proteins that are the essential components of all tissues. So, and this is where we have been wrong all these years. We just measured a protein, a collagen. We did not take care in separating the processes of tissue demolition and tissue repair. Because when we look further at these collagens, it's very obvious that there are some fragments that are associated with repair and some fragments that are associated with demolition. So to truly understand which processes are driving to chronic diseases and which processes that we need to interfere with to reverse or even cure chronic diseases or even regenerate organs, we need to understand the collagen fragments. So I'm going to give you three examples. The first one is bone. I started in bone research more than 24 years ago. And, and what you see up here is, is a healthy bone and a bone with osteoporosis. Type 1 collagen is, is the most abundant protein in bone. And, and what you can see is that the collagens have been lost in the, in the bones that are going to be fracturing. And so if, if we lose collagens, uh, then the bones are going to be fracturing. So we measured the collagen balance in thousands of, uh, of these individuals. And what we found was amazing. We found that 
these patients that were going to have a fracture and they were losing bone, they had more bone formation. Not lower bone formation, but more bone formation. And even more so, they had... Uh, and so why were, they, why were they losing bone? Then we measured the degradation fragments. And it was because that they had even higher degradation fragments that they were losing bone. In fact, all bone treatments today are rebalancing this balance. All bone treatments today are either giving you less bone destruction or more bone formation and rebalancing this important balance. So more collagen fragments. We've been looking into cancer, and this has been an amazing experience. So the premise that we are not just measuring the protein, but specific fragments is in particular true for cancer. So we looked at a collagen, and we looked at two different fragments. One fragment meant that the patients were going to die, and another fragment of the same protein meant that the patients were going to survive. This means that had we just measured the intact collagen, we would not have known what was going to happen. So one fragment of repair is associated with processes that are going to make those patients live, and another fragment is bad processes that are going to make that patient die. That means that we can, can look at those collagen fragments and we can see which treatments those patients are going to be responding to, and this will have an enormous impact on the life of, uh, of cancer patients. So I, I want to go to, to chronic diseases again, because this is the central premise. There are balances of demolition and repair, and those balances are resulting in different fragments of collagens, some that are important for regeneration and some that are important for destruction. And in fact, in all chronic diseases, in liver disease, lung, kidney, skin, we have seen that these fragments are altered. Either the balance of repair is a little too much or there's too much destruction of tissues. And in fact, for all these diseases, for liver, lung and kidney, we have seen that treatments that are actually truly efficacious are changing the collagen balance. So for those treatments not just to be symptomatic, they need to change the collagen balance, just as in bone. So this is the third premise, really, that collagen fragments is like a crystal, a biological crystal ball. I mean, if we know the collagen balance of formation and degradation, we can actually see if, if we're going to develop a chronic disease, we can see if we are reversing a chronic disease, and we can see if, if patients are responding to a given treatment in chronic diseases, including cancer. So in the end, I mean, this constant regeneration and repair means that we collagen fragments are generated in the body all the time, some for demolition and some for repair. In fact, uh, during this talk, I have, I have generated uh, more than a billion cells. And who tells the, the cells what to do? The collagens do. And those collagen fragments, formation and degradation, allows us to look into the future and see what's going to happen. So before I end, I just want to thank the many PhD students, the postdocs, uh, my directors, and all the collaborators that, that through these last 24 years have, have helped us trying to understand the biology of collagens and how they may help us to change the life of patients in a completely new way. May the collagens be with you.